So I, I apologize. I am one week late in this celebration, but I think you'll forgive me. Um, sorry, I'm pulling something close to me. Okay, here I am. Um, so the holidays that I like to adopt um, from our beautiful teachings of India is the teaching of Rakhe Bandi, which is the every single year if you've been studying with me, um, you have done this with me. And it's the practice of generally gratitude toward a brother uh, from a sister for the protection that he gives to her. And I love the idea of our brotherhood and sisterhood and what we do here for each other. And the way that it is celebrated, I'm sure with <laughs> a lot of sweets and all kinds of other things, but tying a little ribbon around your wrist. Um, and so if you have been practicing with me, you know that I have the strings and the threads here. And um, this year is no different. I have strings and threads here. Now I know some of you are not local, so go find your own thread. <laughs> but if you are local, come by, I'll have them outside the door. Um, and you can just reach into the little, the bag looks like this. And it's outside the door and you can just reach in and grab a string. Um, and tie it around your wrist. So I'm gonna do it around Veronica's wrist this morning since she's the wrist that's next to me. <laughs> the wrist. But it's a nice reminder that we are better together and that as we continue to uh, thrive and grow and become during this time, we do it together. And so that's really the celebration of Rocky Bond Day is celebrating our time together on this planet and how we are bettering it, what we're doing to gift back uh, what we've been gifted. Um, so the book that I'm teaching from is called The Holy Man this week. Some of you have read it. If you have not, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Um, it really teaches on that idea of we're better together. And so I'll tell you a quick little story uh, about the book and then throughout the class, I'll give you a little bit more uh, insight into it. Uh, but it's a story about a holy man who uh, has a little cottage at the top, 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 top of a mountain. And the word gets out that he has wisdom. <laughs> Who doesn't want that? And so people start to climb up this mountain, takes quite a while to get there. Um, and then and they start to form a line outside his door. And this line starts to get longer and longer and longer because he only sees um, these people, you know, for a couple of hours a day. And there's rules for this line. There begins, you know, once this starts to form and everything, there's rules. One of the rules is if you leave the line, you're out. You know, you got to start from the end again. Um, and, you know, there's a, a sense of, you know, don't be a, a troublemaker on the line. But what happens on this line is really what happens in our life, because we're all in this together. So whatever trickles at the beginning will trickle down to the end of the line. But the funny part is when you show up at the door to see the holy man, he actually answers the door himself. So he's a very nondescript little man. And he actually answers the door and he'll ask, yes, can I help you? And um, if you say, I came to see the holy man, what he does is he walks you through the house to the other end of the house and opens the back door <laughs> and, and pushes you, not, not hard, but just kind of suggests that you move out the back door and closes the door. And the reason for this is that if you don't recognize all beings as the holy man, right? If you don't, if you, if you have an idea that what he should look like is something different than the little man that answers the door, then he ushers you out. Like there's nothing he can teach you, right? Because your mind has already got the images of what you think things should be. But if he answers the door and you recognize I'm, I'm here to, you know, here, I'm here and this is what I have, you know. But what's more exciting than that, I think that's hysterical. You know, you waited for hours and hours, maybe days and days on the line and you're just walked from the front of the door to the back of the door. I think that's hysterical. But what happens on this line is every person for whatever reason they came, they didn't even need to see him. Their questions or their heart opening energies happened on the line before they even saw him. 
So I'll talk a little bit more about that um, once we get going, but go ahead and close your eyes and recognize yourself as the holy man, the holy woman. Recognize yourself as the wise one. And when you recognize yourself as that, you begin to see that in all beings. And truly, the more that we learn the lesson of love in this lifetime, the more we heal the world. So the more that our eyes soften to see what's right in front of us, not having the expectation of what something should look like, that we too will be more and more cleansed and purified in this lifetime. And that is the hope. So bring your hands together at your heart center. Deeply inhale. Oh. Release your hands and open your eyes. Good, take your legs wide. Just stretch your legs nice and wide. Good, lift your seat and send it back just a little bit. And then walk, walk forward any amount. Maybe if you have props in front of you, you're welcome to put a prop underneath your forearms. Blocks. And also if you'd like to bend your knees here, right? It seems like it's a wrong thing to do when you're in a forward bend because you want to stretch the hamstrings. But I love the idea of getting into your spine. And so to get into your spine, maybe the hamstrings are saying, uh-uh, not yet. So bend your knees and then work your spine longer. Feel your sacrum pressing back and wide. Lift your low belly. Pull your heart forward. And then check out your breath. So one of the characters on the line so every chapter talks about a different character, but one of the characters is the drunkard. And he gets online and doesn't realize how long he's gonna to have to wait and realizes he definitely doesn't have enough booze to last him the whole time. <laughs> and so he asks, can he run back down to the village um, and, and grab some more booze? And the woman in front of him says, absolutely not. That's part of the rules. You can't, I can't hold space for you. So, the day breaks, and when the day breaks, you can, that where you were stays, you know, when the, you're online, you have to stay, but when the, they're not, he's not receiving any more people, that you can hold that space, and so every day he'd run back down to the village. And what happened was that along the way, along the line, he would ask who wanted what, who wanted something from the village. And so he'd actually get to the point where he forgot to get the booze and was getting stuff for everybody else. And not only did he forget to get the drink, but he also was really getting uh, exercise. So he was feeling better. And by the time he actually saw the um, holy man, he no longer craved alcohol and he was feeling great and he wanted to dedicate his life to all beings who needed something. That was before he even saw the holy man. Go ahead and walk your body to the right side. So lean over your right leg. Maybe make your back a little bit rounder so that you have the fullness in your kidneys. And maybe breathe into that roundness, that fullness. Remember our adrenals get super taxed, right? Overload. And so can I breathe into that back body? Can I discover where I feel very tight there? And then like a dear friend, go hang out with that tightness. There was also an impatient woman on the line. <laughs> And so when she got there, go ahead, go to the other side. When she got there, she was just so pissed off. She's like, this is ridiculous. How long do we have to wait? She was so mad. And she tried to change the rules, you know. She tried to get everything like, well, if we maybe women just stand online on Tuesdays and men stand on Wednesdays and maybe somebody calls us when it's our turn. And, you know, she tried to change it. And she actually tried to leave the line in the beginning because she thought it was so ridiculous. And then came back and got online again. And she just was like, I just, you know, I, I have too much energy. I can't do this. Good. Come all the way back up, you guys. Slide those legs back together. Come to a cross-legged position. Let your hands float forward and come onto your hands and knees. Come onto your hands and knees. 
Good, slide your right knee in front of your left knee, right knee in front of left. This is where you might need a prop. Separate your feet a lot. Right knee all the way on top of your left. If you need to look at Veronica, she's doing it for me. And then sit back between your heels. You can either lean forward into this. I can sit on a block too. Either lean forward into this, still like a forward fold. Keep, get your butt all the way down onto the floor. If your knees don't like this, put your right shin in front of your left shin. If your knees don't like this, this is super early for this pose, you guys. <laughs> I know that's what you're thinking. Isn't this super early for this pose? And then lean forward. Again, go into your back body. Breathe into your back body. Make sure your feet are nice and wide. That's great, Roz. Yeah, good job. And so what happened was they ended up giving this impatient woman a job. She wanted a job, right? She didn't want to wait in line, just stand there. And so her job was anytime that somebody got upset on the line, she would go help them. But every time she went to help them, she lost her place in line. <laughs> so she had to get on the end of the line again. Uh, but at some point she didn't care anymore because her job was to help people on the line. And so the summer came to the end when he was going to close shop. And it was almost her time to go see him. And he just, she decided to wait until the next season was opened again and she'd get online again and she'd do the same job. And so she found purpose. You know, this is a woman who was going to leave immediately because she was pissed. Come on back onto your hands and knees and change sides. And again, if knee on top of knee doesn't work, Ruchi, excellent. Keep your feet flexed, Ruchi, okay? Yeah. And then if this doesn't work, just bring the shin in front of the shin. And again, a block underneath your seat works really well too. Yeah, Perry, you got it. Beautiful. Linda, you got a full house there. <laughs> I love it. You have, you have your own little class going on there. <laughs> you guys. Good. And then again, lean forward if you can. And breathe into your back body a lot. Even rounding. And then think of your adrenals. Think of your stress levels. How you can invite them as a friend to sit with you right now and breathe deeply with you right now. Whatever happens at the front of the line always affects the other part of the line. Whatever happens to us individually always affects the rest. And so it's really beautiful that we keep working this love action, love and action, action and love in our lives because it trickles everywhere down the line. God, you guys, really, really good. Okay, and come on up, come onto your hands and knees and press back to child's pose. And once again, breathe into this back body. Maybe even if you're comfortable, turn your palms face up here. Such a feeling of receiving. Surrendering and surrender never means weakness. It's the greatest strength we have is to surrender in this lifetime. Know that we matter and know that we're better together. If your palms are turned up, turn them back down and then walk your upper body to the right side of your mat and get a nice stretch there. And keep breathing here. Keep extending and maybe just walk a little further. And then walk it to the other side. Nice and slow.
in breath and out breath. It's been a great time to reclaim yourself, to invite yourself back to yourself, to know yourself even more deeply. I was speaking to somebody yesterday on the phone and we were talking about how if really you're just trying to rush through this time and get back to the way things were, you're missing the whole purpose of this time. It's quite meaningful. Maybe just a little further if you can go, just a little further if you can go. Feel your hips press back, feel your sit, bone, sit bones go wide. <clears throat> And then come all the way back and onto your hands and knees again. And then slide your right arm out to the right, thread it underneath your left. Take your left arm either up to the sky or walk it forward. And again, keep stretching the side body and squeezing the back body. Yeah. You might even take that left leg out to the left. That's kind of a nice added <laughs> place that you can almost fall out of. Great, you guys, that looks really good. Inhale, come on up, switch sides. second side and work through that shoulder squeeze through that spine really really pretty nice Anne. good joy yeah i like i like our little extras that we add <laughs> look at you Roz. rock and roll lady good and Come on back onto your hands and knees. Do a little cat and cow here. Inhale to look forward, exhale to look back. Great, Stacy. Harry. Catrins in the house. Beautiful, Marjorie. Yep. Use that breath. Robin. Great, Jane, and then press back, downward facing dog. Become long in your breath here. Maybe let your exhales even get a little longer. And then step your right foot forward, please. And then walk to the left until you come to the center of your mat. Walk to the left, turn your right foot. So you're facing the long side of your mat, Sue. Keep going, keep going, there you go. And then a deep bow. Let those feet parallel each other. You can bend your knees here, but I would also say put blocks underneath your hands, raise the floor up a little bit if you need. Good, and squeeze your outer shins toward each other, widen your inner thighs away from each other. And again, create that space in your back body to breathe. Then walk your hands forward so it's a really wide-legged downward facing dog. Katrin, what do you have on your right foot? <laughs> oh no. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. tops of your thighs back and wide you guys scoop that low belly remember the minute you scoop the low belly the, the you're going to be scooping that tailbone under don't do that press it back back and wide back and wide back and wide and then walk your hands back in and walk back to the front of your mat and step back, downward facing dog. You can take a vinyasa here if you'd like. And 
And if you would rather skip the vinyasa for your reasons today, I have my reasons when I skip vinyasas. Left foot comes forward. And then go ahead and turn, turn, turn until you're facing the side of your mat again. And a deep bow at first. So be willing to find your whole foot here. Be willing to see the, the toes as they reach into the floor and the heels as they reach into the floor. I want you to do that because I don't want you just falling on your heels. That's a very typical place to be. Fall to your toes first and then become light in your heels. Good, you guys. And then breathe back into this back body. What has brought us to this moment? What has gifted us in the past to bring us to where we are now? The back body is that representative. What lives in my past what has created who I am now. Walk your hands forward. Take your hip creases way back. So keep your hands where they were. Just walk them forward to that wide side of your mat. You got it. So you have a nice long downward facing dog. Scoop that low belly. You can let your head drop here and or keep your ears in line with your arms. So just know what you're doing, I guess, is the best way to say that. Go to Lisa, Jackie, and that. Really good. Walk your hands back in. Walk your hands to the front of your mat. Step back, downward facing dog. And feel free to take it through a vinyasa plank pose all the way down to your belly, rising up to cobra. Yep, you can always throw a vashistasana in it. Great. And then walk or jump to the front of your mat, standing forward bend. I don't know if you guys are getting the theme today, a little forward bending. Forward bending is energetically in a place of acceptance. Forward bending, releasing. Gorgeous, you guys. And then bend your knees, reach your arms forward and up chair. Hands on your thighs and cat and cow. Press your thighs way down. It's a really nice way to feel it more powerfully in your spine as you move. Good. Inhale the arms up and exhale, bow forward. Take your left leg back behind you, not too far. Both legs go straight, Parshvottanasana. Make sure your left foot is not directly behind your right heel. Move your left foot further out to the left, both legs straight. And you can play for a minute with that idea of bending your front knee and getting your spine to move just a little longer and then straightening your front leg. Again, be careful of not locking that front knee back. Tack that right hip crease back, lift your right low belly a lot, you guys. And again, just wander into that back body and breathe it. Maybe your upper back, maybe your middle back, breathe it. Really nice, you guys, change sides, please. Step your left foot forward, right leg back. Outer hips, they hug. Sit bones widen. Scoop low belly, extend your spine. deep contemplation and forward bends too. And when I say that, I mean almost to not translate anything, but let that inner voice, that inner goddess, that holy woman, holy man, let them kind of be given the opportunity to speak. Good, just another two breaths here, deep breaths. Knowledge. The holy man here and now. 
Go ahead, step to the front of your mat, standing forward bend. Bend your knees, reach your arms forward and up chair. Rise up to stand, take a baby back bend. Bring your hands to your heart center, close your eyes. Bow to you. <clears throat> Good. And then bring your left knee into your chest, please. Hug your left knee in. Remember, the minute you hug your knee in, you're probably going to have your tailbone scoop under. So press your sit bones back and wide here. Push back. And then stretch your left leg out in front of you and place your hands underneath your hamstrings. So hold that leg up. Now press your thigh down into those hands. Lift your chest higher. Don't forget those sit bones gotta go back, so don't scoop your tail under here. Push back, lift up. Now see the standing leg is firm. Press down through the standing leg. I know. Take your arms up to the sky. Don't let the leg from fall down, a lot of work. And gently place that leg down, good. You can do a little dance and be a little dramatic if you want to. <laughs> okay, hug your right knee into your chest. Again, watch how much we scoop that tailbone. Press back. So the tailbone will do a natural scoop when that navel pulls in and up. So that'll be really great. Then widen the sit bones. Now place your hand underneath your right thigh and push that leg to straight. Press your thigh down into that hand. Lift your chest as much as you can. Not as easy, I know. Don't let those toes turn out as if you were standing on whatever's right in front of you. Good, now lift your arms to the sky, lift your chest a lot, pull the ribs in. Keep breathing and release down. Good, good, good. Do you guys have a block or um, a, everybody have a block? If you don't, like a couple of books would help. So this is directly stolen from Veronica's class last week. Take your block then place it on the baby toe side of your right foot. Again, if you don't have it, don't worry. You'll just do a little air block. And then lift your left knee into your chest and take your left knee over your right knee and place your uh, left foot on that block, just the top of your foot so your heel stays lifted. Good, now lower down your seat. So go real nice and low here. And then you're pushing the block, you're squeezing your shins in but you're pulling your sit bones wide apart. So squeeze your shins in like crazy and then reach your arms up and alongside your ears like you're in chair. But get that little puff of your low back, squeeze that little, your rib cage in so the back can get fuller heel here. Reach the arms up, stay low. You got a lot going on here. Squeeze the shins like crazy, you guys. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Are you breathing? and then come on up. Good, and change sides. Good job, those of you who did the air block. <laughs> All right, put the block on the other side. So powerful legs here, you guys. Right knee on top of left, right foot comes onto the block, heel stays lifted. Take your butt way low, way low. And then reach your arms way high. <laughs> so my spine is just so cool right now. It's just getting as much space as it needs to breathe between the vertebra. But I'm squeezing my shins a lot. My belly is absolutely on board with this. Reach, reach, reach. Press into that block if you have it. Gives that little bit of resistance. And then come on up. Very good. Turn your feet, move the block out of the way. Turn your feet wide and sit and squat. If squat doesn't work, stay in chair for just a moment. If you're in squat, your feet are going to turn a little wider. Good. Now reach your arms forward. Forward, just straight ahead. 
Good. Now lift up your butt. You're in, if, you're all, if you're in chair, stay there. You're great. If you're in squat, I want you to lift your butt up a little bit and send your butt back behind you. Good. Look down to the floor. Now turn your feet parallel to each other. Good. Now start to bring your seat back down toward that squat. Go slow, slow, slow. And then lift your butt back up a little bit, little bit, little bit. Lift your butt back up. Be careful if your knees don't like this. Say it stay in squat instead. I mean, chair instead. One more time, lower your butt down just a little bit, little bit, little bit. Go ahead and lift your butt up. And then bring your hands to the floor, standing forward bend. Woo! Woo! That was delish. I bet you can't wait to hear about the angry man. He's coming up in our story. Inhale your left leg to the sky, left leg up. Every character in this book is me and you. Everyone, left leg up. Turn the toes to the floor. Now bend your standing leg and move your right, uh, your right knee a little bit wider to the right. Good, now push the thigh to straighten the leg, not the knee. Push the thigh to straighten the leg. This is your standing leg. And then bring that leg down and switch sides. I think it's so much more helpful if you put a block underneath each hand. It just gives you a little bit more space with your hands. Good. With that other leg up, get the right leg up. Again, bend your left knee, widen your left knee. Yeah. Scoop that left low belly a lot, a lot, a lot. And then as you straighten that leg, push the thigh back, push the thigh back. The shin can actually stay slightly forward. Watch the back toes, turn them down. And then lower. Inhale the arms out and up. Exhale the hands to your heart center. Close your eyes. Good, inhale the arms out and up. Exhale, bow forward. Send your left leg back behind you. Turn the left foot parallel to the back of the mat. We're gonna come into Virabhadrasana two, second warrior. Good, power in your spine, power in your legs. So straighten that right leg. Come up to your right heel, lift up onto your right heel, dig that heel down, pull it back. And then slowly, slowly, slowly reach for that right ankle or a block. Don't let the foot come down yet. Reach, 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 trikonasana. And then lower that foot down, open up. Take that top shoulder back more, more than the arm. So the arm tends to float back and the shoulder tends to come forward. That's it, Robin, that's perfect. Yes, 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 nice, Janet. And then bend that right knee, come forward in, into half moon pose. So Rakhi Bandi is the full moon in August. That's why I'm a week late. Celebration of our sisterhood, brotherhood. We're there for each other. We got your back. Maybe reach for your ankle if you'd like, take it away from the hamstrings and put it more into the thigh here. And then gently step it back nice and slow, take it into downward facing dog. Take it through a vinyasa if you'd like. Nice, Lisa. Beautiful, you guys. Nice, Jen. And then we're going to move to the left side. Left foot forward. We're going to come into Virabhadrasana 2. Left foot forward, Virabhadrasana 2.
And from here, you'll straighten that left leg and come up to that left heel, dig the heel down, pull it back. That's it, Alana, beautiful. Get your upper body, get your armpits to even lift a little bit more and then start to reach, reach, reach. Maybe hang out in that maybe wobbly place for just a moment. Scoop the low belly, lift the chest, and then lower the foot slowly. Left foot forward, triangle pose. Good, Jane. Gorgeous, everybody, Lisa. And then come forward into half moon. Maybe reach back for that ankle. Gorgeous, Melanie, that's beautiful. Remember, you're squeezing the legs toward each other here. Elena, great. Good, Anna. Reach, 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 or stay, stay, stay. Just breathe, breathe, breathe. <laughs> and step back, good job, downward facing dog. Take it through your vinyasa of choice or none. And then go ahead and drop down to those knees and press back to child's pose. I'll tell you a little bit about the angry man. So when Pilgrim, Pilgrim, when the door was shut behind him, felt enraged, his blood rushed to his brain, breaking blood vessels into the whites of his eyes. He pounded on the door, he shouted. So he was one of those uh, pilgrims that got just <laughs> got to go in the front door and out the back door. He pounded on the door, he shouted at the top of his lungs, let me back in, you can't do this to me. Who do you think you are, you fraud, you pipsqueak? Angry and angry he grew. He banged on the door, then went down the steps, stomping on the ground, flailing his arms, looking to, for something to harm, to break, a rock to throw, flowers to trample. But his red eyes were too blind with rage to even see a rock, a stick, or a flower. So he roared louder, calling every vile, vicious, profane, profane foul word he knew. And he had many at his command for his sort of temper tantrum was not new to him. What was new was being alone. There was no one to cower fearfully before his wrath. No one to try to placate him, shudder, turn away. No one there but himself. So his rage ran out and he began to return to his senses. But an echo was coming back to him from the hills across the valley. His words were coming back at him, fraud, pipsqueak. But the words came not one at a time as it usually the case it would. No, in this echo, when he fell silent, the entire vile, vicious, foul-mouthed, disgusting tirade came back to him word by word. And at the same time, his shadow reenacted his insane dance, his berserk leaping, stomping and flailing. And for the first time, he saw how he looked and heard how he sounded. And he was ashamed. There's more here, I'll tell you later. Come on up to your hands and knees. Good, press back, downward facing dog. Inhale that right leg back and up behind you, down dog split. Step your right foot forward, lower your left knee to the mat. Inhale your arms to the sky, Anjanayasana. Make sure your knee is pointing right at the second toe. Take your throat way back and lean back into a really sweet back bend. Nice, you guys. And then lower both hands inside your right foot and slide your right leg straight as in half Hanuman. And then move your right leg a little bit further out to the right. If it was a clock, it would be the number two. And then turn your right toe slightly in and let your inner right thigh move way wide. Let your right butt cheek move way wide to the right. And then slide your right leg maybe a little bit further. Maybe here's where you have your hands on blocks. And then maybe come down to your elbows or stay with straight arms. So you're kind of in a, going into a fuller sense of Hanuman. 
but it's a bit of a angled Hanuman and maybe gives you a little bit more space to play. Yeah, breathe in and breathe out. The more you push your sit bones wide, will give your hamstrings some space, scoop that low belly, breathe into that back body. <laughs> Hi, Joy's cat, tail. <laughs> Beautiful, you guys come on up. Step back, downward facing dog. That's sloppy step back. <laughs> Vinyasa of choice or none. Great, and then in downward facing dog, we'll take your left leg back and up behind you. Great. And then step your left foot forward, Anjanayasana, take those arms up to the sky, front knee is bent. Nice crystal. Yeah, Renee, open those armpits. Come on, come on. Great, Sarah. You guys are gorgeous. And then your hands come down inside your foot. You're gonna move your, straighten your leg and move the leg a little bit more to the left as on like a 10 on the clock. Turn your toes in, let your left butt cheek move as far to the left as you can move it comfortably. And that doesn't mean let your right seat come with you. So keep steadfast, both sit bones wide, scoop the low belly and then walk forward any amount. Back knee is still on the mat. Yeah, Alana, great. Yep, yep, yep. Come on, come on. No time to leave. <laughs> great. Nice, Jackie, Susan, Lorna. Come on, come on. Okay, here we go, come on up. Nice, Perry, down or facing dog. Okay, come all the way down to your belly. Bring your arms alongside the body, bring your forehead to the mat. Scoop your belly in already. You know, when we're laying on our bellies, we tend to, I tend to, so I assume you tend to as well. Let the belly just hang out there. So pull your navel in and then lift your legs, lift your arms, lift your head. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Great, Dana. And then come all the way back down. Bring your elbows in front of you into Sphinx pose. And then just take a couple of breaths. As you inhale, you look forward. You exhale, you tuck your toes under, lift your seat up and bring your chin to your chest, rounding in your back. So you're in a forearm plank. Then you inhale, drop the belly, look forward. Exhale, tuck your chin, lift your rib cage, lift up your seat. Good, do just a couple of those, no big deal. Nice, Perry, good. Then next time you lift your seat up, go ahead and walk your feet in just a little bit. Take your feet in so you're in a forearm dog. And don't crush your middle back. Keep that little puffed up middle back. Armpits move forward. And then walk your feet back and come on down to your belly. Make a little pillow with your hands and rest. coming Friday night, you guys, we're doing Kirtan again. We'd love for you to join us. We had so much fun last time. My son, myself, and our friend Jordan. 
We have a little bit of space here in the studio that we open up to and the rest will be on Zoom at six o'clock on Friday night. And last time we proved that we can have just as much fun on Zoom. Okay, so here's tricky. Reach back for your ankles. That's not the tricky part. Well, for some of us it is, but reach back for your ankles. Forehead to the mat. Now I want you to lift your butt up here so it's weird I want you to lift your butt up here so forehead on the mat I want you to feel your inner thighs widening here your scoop of your low belly here so the tailbone then only starts to root down as you lift up go slow lift your head neck and chest and then let the pelvis slowly reach to the floor so you're really activating not over activating that tailbone widen those sit bones Breathe into that squeeze of the kidneys and then release back down. Good, turn your cheek to the side. This man that was so angry, he was a learned man. He was a philanthropist, a leader. He once had been considered a sensitive person. Now he saw himself. He saw the playback of what he had just done. Exhausted from this seizure, this angry seizure, he sat down on a rock to rest before his descent down to town. And the rock was smooth and sun warmed. It soothed his muscles that were still twitching from the fit he had. And several round gray birds, which the holy man called boulder birds, arranged themselves around him and started to sing and he felt they were just there for his benefit he felt happy and grateful the reason he had come to see the holy man <laughs> was about his temper got to see what it looked like what it felt like okay come back into sphinx pose please Good. So once again, we're going to lift up those hips. We're going to walk into that forearm dog. We're going to walk your feet in, in, in. And take your right leg to the sky. Don't lose your rib cage coming in, please. So keep pulling the rib cage in. Now bend that right knee toward your butt. Now look up, kick your heel toward the back of your head, but don't let your ribs pop forward. Armpits hollow, you guys. Moving your armpits forward. Lower that leg down and change to the other side. Don't tense your neck to get here. This is a lot of work, I know. I know. Don't tense your neck to get here. Look forward, click your heel toward the back of your head. Keep those ribs intact. Pull in, lower down, drop down to your knees, press back to child's pose. Breathe into that back body. Good, those of you who lay on your back for pigeon, go ahead and find yourself coming to your back, otherwise downward facing dog. Sending your right leg back and up behind you and then sending your right knee forward for pigeon, right knee behind your right wrist. Squeeze your knees toward each other. Become as upright as possible. Maybe even take your arms off of the floor if you can. Draw your elbows wide. You're squeezing your legs in so that assists that lift of those arms. Gorgeous, you guys. And then walk your hands forward any amount, forehead to the mat. Try to keep that bit of rounding in your back here. Try to keep that navel lifted. Breathe back body. Gratitude to this back body. If you're on your back, your right ankle is on top of your left knee, your feet are flexed.
see the holy woman inside of you, the wise one. Sometimes we just talk to our physical body, right? But we also have the mental body, the breath body, the wise body, the bliss body. A deep conversation with all the layers of our being. You can stay here or you can come up to take a twist. So if you want to come up and take a twist, let's do a uh, twist to uh, the opposite side. So your left hand is, I'm sorry, your right hand is going to reach for your left ankle. It's going to be a nice little thigh stretch if you'd like. Do the twisting one, Sue. Susan, do the twisting one. So take the other arm back, yeah. And keep those hips nice and square. Yep, 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 yep. Right hand, yep. Make sure that knee is directly behind you if you're taking the twist too. Good job. And then gently release. And if you're on your back, we're going to switch sides. You can stay right where you are or take it through downward facing dog. You're certainly welcome to take it through a vinyasa if you'd like. Otherwise, left leg back and up behind you, taking your left knee forward for pigeon. Be upright and maybe lift those elbows up for a moment. Scoop in that low belly, rib cage lifting. Squeeze your knees. You'll find the power of lifting your hands if those knees draw together. Good job. Good job, Ross. And then walk those hands forward, forehead to the mat, rounding in your belly just a little bit, in your back, I mean. Don't round in your belly. Pull your navel in. Be the breath here, enjoy the breath here. Keep breathing. Really nice. You can stay right here or come into the twisting thigh stretch, reaching back for your ankle behind you. Left hand reaches. Keep pulling that back knee forward to assist your twist. Get that shoulder back. Nice, Catherine. Beautiful. Yep. And then release. And then go ahead and swing both legs out in front of you. You're going to hug your left knee into your chest. Let your left knee fall out to the side, Janna Shashasana. Twist over your right leg so you get a little bit of a twist navel, points to that right leg, and then lean forward over that right leg. Always use a strap here. Yeah. If you're using a strap, really work those shoulders back. Good, Sarah. Nice, Jackie. And just for fun, try to walk a little bit further to the right, almost getting your left arm on the opposite side of your right leg. So you're churning through the belly, churning and churning. Yeah, 
It's really nice to use that right hand to anchor too, isn't it? Yep. And then come on back up, stretch your legs out, change sides. Good, turn toward the extended leg. Come forward at first, just over that leg. Maybe start to take that little deeper twist. Squeeze that shin in. Point those toes to the sky. Remember the widening of the inner thigh still happens here. It's a great part about the blueprint of our body. No matter what shape we're making, it's always got the same patterns in the body to open. Good, come all the way back up. So I'm gonna give you an opportunity to go upside down and maybe you don't wanna do that. You could just sit to meditate. If you'd like to go upside down, you could try shoulder stand, headstand, handstand. Again, it's not uh, suggested that you try something new <laughs> without uh, a little assistance. But headstand, shoulder stand, handstand or laying on your back, taking your legs to the sky. Or sitting to meditate. <laughs> the funny thing about handstand, I'm only saying it because Veronica is playing with handstand, is that you still want that action of your Tailbone, tail, tailbone not to over tuck. So if somebody's using a wall trying hand standing, just be aware. Or if you're doing it free falling. I shouldn't call it free falling, should I? Free standing. <laughs> Yay, that's good. Hi, Stacy. Veronica's my hero. <laughs> I would do one and stop, you know, like, oh, that was good enough. <laughs> Just did like 20 in a row kicks. Nice, Lisa P. Beautiful, Lisa. A. Jane, I see your legs in the air. Good, Perry. Nice, Richie. Crystal. Just one more minute here, you guys. You know, the kind of consensus in the beginning of being on Zoom was just, you know, don't teach inversions because you're not there to watch every move they're making. But, you know, this went on a little longer than we expected. <laughs> so I don't want you to stay away from your inversions. They're very important. And I'm not always sure you'll do them later. <laughs> Good. And then find yourself coming to a comfortable seat. If you want to do anything as an op opposite of what you just did, you know that you're always welcome to do that. If you're in headstand, maybe a little down dog for a moment. If you're in shoulder stand, maybe a little fish for a moment. Or just roll your head side to side. Good. You go ahead and close your eyes. When you're ready, don't rush. Bring your thumb and your first finger to touch. This is your wisdom mudra, jnana mudra. Thumb and first finger to touch. And then just sit for a moment with the wise, holy. Right, yoga, one of the translations of yoga is perfection in action. 
And what that means is that our actions create goodness and hurt no one. It's a benefit to someone, maybe yourself, and at the same time hurts no one. That's perfection in action. So thumb and first finger together. Take a moment here just to breathe and listen deeply. You can stay here or come to lie down on your back for Shavasana. And very slowly begin to deepen your breath. 
Let your body begin to stretch and yawn in any way that supports you well. You're lying on your back, hug your knees into your chest. Maybe take a little spinal twist left and right. If you're seated, do the same if you'd like. <clears throat> and then if you're lying down and you've twisted to both sides, come on up to sit. Bring your hands to your heart center. Chant the closing chant one time together. Asatoma Sargamaya Tamasoma Jotia Mrityorma Amritam Amritam Gamaya Inhale for the sound of Om. Sliding your hands to the space between the eyebrows. Namaste, everybody. Releasing your hands down. Unmute you. There you go. Come to Kirtan on Friday if you can, 6 o'clock. We have other things on the schedule. We also, I don't know if yet it's been put out there, but one of my dear friends from Ananda Ashram is going to be teaching a... Um, workshop on our uh, our zodiac uh, charts and each one of us will get a simple chart uh, to work with our own specific um, uh, planets and such but mainly focusing on the 2020 what's coming up and uh, and why and how the planets have shown us this so that's coming up too um, we'll get that out on either email it might have already gone out um, and other things that are coming up for sure, some outdoor classes. I know we're going to get going and uh, just lots of things in the works. So I'm looking forward to that. Thank you guys for being here. You did an awesome job.